Section 17.3, acid-base titrations. So in an acid-base titration, the solution of base um, is known, the, uh, and the concentration of this base. So like usually I'm pouring a base into an acid. Okay, so I have an acid in a jar, and I don't know its concentration, but I do know the volume. So I've measured the volume. I put it in the, in the beaker at the bottom. Then I have an, 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 a known volume of base at the top. So I have graduations along the burette. This is called a burette. And it's got a concentration of base that I know. So I know its molarity. But I don't know the molarity of the acid. So I'm going to pour some of the base into the acid. And then I'm going to try to, to finagle it so that I know that the same amount of moles uh, that cancel out in a, in a balanced equation will be the same amount of moles of acid. So if the same amount of moles of base and acid where they cancel each other out, then I know that I have essentially neutralized the acid or neutralized the base, or I've neutralized the acid with the base. Okay, so you have a, a solution of a base of known concentrations added to an acid Okay, or you could do it the other way. I guess you could put the base in the jar and put the acid in it. it. doesn't matter. You can do it either way. And then you're inside the acid, you're going to have an acid base indicator, which is just a, an organic dye that changes color at, an, at a specific pH range. Or you could use a pH meter. A pH meter will tell you the pH at any time, and you could use a pH meter for that too. So the equivalence point is reached eventually where the same um, uh, the uh, the equivalent quantities of acid and base have been as added together and they cancel each other out and then i'm going to plot a curve called a ph titration curve okay it's going to kind of look like this this is called a ph titration curve and it's going to measure the ph of eventually the, uh, originally the acid and then as you start pouring the base in, they kind of come to an equivalence point, and then you end up with more base at the end. So it's a curve that kind of tells you what the pH as it's as this uh, lab technique is going on. So we'll come back to this in a minute. Let me give you some examples of some different types of acid-base reactions. If I have a strong acid and a strong base, so like I have sodium uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide and they come together well, what's going to happen is the the hydrogen is going to come off of the the chlorine and join with the hydroxide and make water so an acid base reaction is always making water okay there's something to write down it's always making water and then a salt and the salt is coming off of the various things so the the cation of the salt is coming off of the cation of the of the base the anion of the salt is coming off of the anion of the base all right so you're always going to be making salt water every time that you put an acid and a base together now strong acids strong bases remember completely dissociate all of it comes together into into uh, positives and negatives and since they all completely break apart and then all cancel out you are going to get a pH that's exactly halfway between acid and base. So you're going to neutralize the acid with the base or neutralize the base with the acid, and you're going to get a pH of 7. Now, if you have a weak acid and a strong base, then not all of your acid is going to break apart. Okay, Only a little bit is going to break apart. It's going to join and make water. Okay, So it's the same as any acid base. It's going to make water. But most of the acid is going to stay put. When it makes the salt water, remember, this is aqueous. So this will break apart. This is completely uh, dissociates. This is becomes uh, positive and negative. And this acetate, okay, which is the conjugate base of that acid, is itself a little bit of a weak base. And since it's a weak base, it's going to raise the pH a little more than 7. So if you have a weak acid and a strong base you are going to have a pH that's higher than 7. Okay, so it'll be more basic rather than acidic. It won't be neutral, it'll be a little bit basic. 
So here's an example of a weak acid and a strong base. You have some vinegar. This is acetic acid. A strong base is, is the sodium hydroxide. The hydrogen comes off with the hydroxide and becomes water. You're going to end up with a little bit of sodium ion and a little bit of acetate ion. The acetate is a weak base, so it's going to raise the pH, and your pH is going to be above 7. The same thing would happen if you had a weak base and a strong acid. The weak base doesn't completely break apart. Most of the base is going to stay, stay together. So here is your base. Most of it's going to be, um, this is ammonia. At the end, it's going to be ammonia. Okay, It's going to take the hydrogen to itself and become ammonium. This is NH4 plus and a little bit of chloride. Okay, Since since the ammonium is a weak acid, it's going to drop the pH below 7. Okay, so when you have the conjugate acid of a weak base, you're going to end up with it with a an uh, or a weak acid, it's going to drop the pH below 7. So if you have a strong acid and a weak base, it's a weak base, you're going to drop the pH. If you have a weak acid and a strong base, you're going to raise the pH a little bit. If you have a strong base, strong acid, it's going to be right at 7. Here's an example. Hydrochloric acid, strong acid. Ammonia is a weak base. You're going to end up with water plus a salt, and your salt is going to be ammonium, NH4+, and chloride ion, Cl-. Ammonium is a, strong, is a weak acid, and since that's a little bit of an acid, it's going to drop the pH below 7, and you're going to be, have a slightly acidic solution. The real weird one and the one that you can't really guess is if you were to titrate a weak acid with a weak base because you really can't guess what it's going to be. Every acid has a different case of A. Every base has a, a different case of B. So as you put them together, uh, you can't really predict what they are. You would have to measure them out. So back to titration. Titration, remember, is a... Is a um, it's a procedure, so it's, it's not really a reaction. It's a lab technique where you are carefully, uh, you have a carefully measured concentration of something, usually the base, in a burette that is dropped little bit by little bit into an unknown concentration of acid, okay, with a, with a known volume. And then you are going to measure the equivalence point where equivalence point is when all of the acid and all the base neutralize into water. That's where we're going. By doing this, we'll be able to determine, okay, that's the purpose. You're determining the concentration of your, of your acid. The titration curve almost always looks like this. Now, this is a strong acid, strong base. You're going to see that the, they slightly change when you have the weak acids or weak bases. But you're going to have a curve where it's measuring the pH at different points. Uh, this is normally done with a pH meter. A pH meter, just um, there's a change in the electric current inside the uh, solution, and they can kind of tweak that current to know how much stuff is in it at each time. But you're measuring it here at the beginning. This is just the acid. Then eventually you're going to have a little bit of excess acid. Then you're going to have equal amounts of acid and base. And then as it comes, you're going to basically measure the base. So it's going to start off really low if you have an acid and then it's going to start off real, uh, end up really high when you have mostly base in the water. And then as you play with this, as you do this in the lab, this is going to make much more sense than trying to learn this out of a book. So really quickly, this curve is going to show at you know if you're going to have acid in the pot, if there's acid in your in your beaker, it's going to start with a really low pH because pH has a low number when you have acid. And at the beginning, this is all measuring the um you're measuring the ph of the solution before you start adding the um, base out of the out of burette now you're starting to add the base and the and the ph is starting to rise because you've added base and base makes it go higher right before right before you get to an equivalence point it's going to start rising very very quickly and sometimes this can happen in a split second you can go tick 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 and it takes forever and ever and ever and all of a sudden this is a flash it happens in just a, a mill, mill, millisecond, and it drives you crazy to try to catch it, but that's what you do.
Now right at the equivalent point, you've got the same amount of acid and base that have neutralized. So for instance, you're going to have, since this is a strong acid and a strong base, all of the hydrogens will come off, all of the hydroxides will come off, and at the point where they're equivalent, that means for every hydrogen you have, you have a hydroxide, they join together and make water. Okay, that's what they're, that's what they're making. You're always making water when you have an acid-base reaction. That's your product. Water plus leftover salt. So water has a pH of 7. That's why a strong acid, which completely makes H's, and a strong base, which completely makes hydroxides, will always you have a pH of 7 at the end because you've made water, and water is 7. At the end, what's happening is you're continually adding hydroxide, or you're adding some kind of a base, until your pH goes up, 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 until it, until it kind of tapers off um, at the end. So you're going to have this kind of S shape, always S shape, when you're doing a titration. And then the inflection point is this equivalent. When it stops rising, and then basically turns around uh, and makes a different shape. That's, that's the classic shape for a titration. If you have a strong base with a weak acid, you're not going to get such a, a pronounced curve. What's going to happen is that it doesn't kind of break apart as much as it does with a strong acid because most of it's going to stay the molecule. It doesn't break apart into H's. And so you're going to have this kind of a wimpy curve. Okay, It kind of wimps out. Uh, it's not as nice and you know kind of 90 degree angle as you have with a straight. So if you were to see a, a, a curve, a printout curve of an acid base, you could almost tell whether it was a strong acid, which gives you this kind of nice straight, or kind of a wimpy uh, curve for a, for a, in, in case of a weak acid. The weaker the acid, the wimpier the curve, okay? Like that's a puny curve, that's al almost nothing. The stronger the acid, the more pronounced of a curve you're gonna get. If you were to go backwards and you are, you've, instead of a base in the burette and an acid in the, in the jar, if you have put a base in the jar, you're going to start it really high. You're going to have a high pH. And then as you add acid, it's going to drop and you're going to get a low pH. So it's essentially the opposite of what you did if you were to do an acid, an acid one. In the case that you have two H's to throw, okay, so... I don't know which one this is. Who knows? Let me just make up one. So if I have H2SO4, all right, sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid, the first H that is thrown is strong. Then the second H is actually weak. So H2SO4 has two protons, so it's called polyprotic. In this case, specifically, it's diprotic. Di is meaning two, poly meaning many. Uh, you could have one with three, where you have H3PO4. This is phosphoric acid, also strong. It has three H's to throw. Well, in this case, you're going to end up with multiple uh, titration curves. So here's the first one, where it's a, this is an, a base being poured into an acid. Here's the first H that's coming off. And there's the equivalence point, and it's going to curve around. Okay. Then here's the second H coming off, and here's your second equivalence point, and then it's come come around again. So that's a polyprotic uh, acid with a strong base.